Hi and welcome back with another tutorial. In the last video, my Zebra Sculpt stage was finished. So I brought all the meshes here with the lowest subdivision levels, so that uh, I may be able to clean the hard surface objects. Uh, right now, I'm working on the shoulder pads, and you can see that I'm cleaning it up uh, by scaling some of the uh, edges. Uh, and removing some of the edges uh, that were jagged edges I was removing them and I'm also scaling them uh, along a specific axis by rotating rotating and scaling them and making sure it, it stays clean and soft and right now I'm making sure that it uh, fits the shoulder place exactly uh, like the previous mesh and also it's nice and soft in ZBrush it looked smooth but uh, in my eye I can see that there are some jagged edges right now I'm adding multiple edges and extruding some of the faces out and adding uh, I'm adding uh, multiple edge loops on the corners because when I subdivide it in ZBrush it should stay smooth and sharp I'm removing some of the extra edges and now I'm extruding uh, the inner edge after adding uh, bevel to it uh, I add bevels most of the time because uh, I like to know how it's going to look when I subdivide it in ZBrush whether the corner stays sharp and uh, sharp and crisp right now I was adding thickness most of the time when I'm working with Maya I add different materials to different part of the clothing so I may get the idea of how it looks right now I added another additional plane in uh, and this extruded it out scaled it on different angle edges and right now I'm adding bevels to multiple edges and making sure uh, it's smooth uh, it's nice and smooth so uh, this part of the mesh I will be duplicating it along the shoulder pad so uh, because uh, I will be duplicating it uh, I want to uh, bend it along a curve so I will just convert a single edge from it uh, from uh, the shoulder pads and bend this mesh along the curve but uh, I need to measure the length of the curve so I'm using my uh, arc distance tool here right now and measuring the length of the curve and then I'm uh, at scaling this plane to the same distance and I will bend this mesh right now it's longer so I deleted the uh, additional faces and right now I'm using bend deformer but I will be using curve wrap before because the bend uh, doesn't actually uh, simulate the shape of the shoulder pad so I will be uh, undoing it later on <coughs> yeah now I think I will be uh, extruding uh, converting this edge into curve and then uh, bending it and using curve wrap deformer so it is very important uh, so when you're using a curve wrap deformer it is very important that uh, uh, you should freeze transformation and center pivot uh, before applying the curve wrap deformer and otherwise there will be some weird artifacts if you apply the curve wrap deformer uh, without freeze transformation or without uh, centering pivot and the object mesh object should be in the center of uh, Maya before applying curve wrap deformer otherwise there would be problems so right now I'm uh, scaling uh, the bottom vertices out and uh, uh, since most of the meshes will deform along the curve so I'm making those meshes I added multiple edge loops here with the connect tool right now I'm extruding the additional faces inward so this mesh uh, will also be deformed uh, along the curve so I'm making them all of making all of them the same length but since uh, the length uh, should uh, get, get shorter from top to bottom of the shoulder pads because the shoulder pad is thicker on the top and it uh, gradually uh, gets uh, thinner on the when moving towards the bottom so right now merging additional vertices or clearing out some, um, some artifacts that appear in Maya uh, I'm making sure that there is no non-manifold geometry when I'm working on uh, the meshes and for all of my hard surface objects I do add corner edges or uh, uh, corner bevels onto it so that when I smooth it out in the brush it doesn't deform uh, wrongly so here I added a bevel in order to smooth out the curve and now I'm extracting a face from it and I'm adding a edge loop and then beveling it out to make sure uh, to add a smooth curve to it 
and now i just uh, bridged the uh, alternating faces and i did additional edge loops so that it stays smooth and sharp so uh, th this is the same part right now i'm adding thickness to it and uh, i will make multiple duplicates of it and then i will deform it along the curve using the curve wrap deformer and i'm making sure that the uh, orientation is correct and the pivot is in the center and the object is in the center of the grid uh, uh, because otherwise if you apply the curve wrap deformer without doing any of these steps then it will uh, uh, bend it wrongly uh, finally i added the gold material on top of it and i just duplicated it up. right now i'm also working on uh, a some part of the shoulder mesh and uh, i'm just ex uh, took a plane and i'm just extruding it out and added multiple edge loops with the multi cut and then added bevels to it and then i extruded some of the faces and and now I'm just transforming it and making sure that the shape I'm looking for, I'm transforming it into it. And then now I'm adding multiple edge loops and bevels so that uh, on the corner edges, so that the corner stays smooth and sharp. I'm also adding bevels to the center loop so that uh, it stays sharp and pointy. So uh, I. I uh, always press 3 and check whether my mesh is mesh is deforming correctly or not because if it's not deforming correctly or if the shape uh, is changing drastically uh, then it will be a problem when i will be taking this mesh into the brush and apply subduing levels so for all of my meshes i check to make sure that it's working correctly right now i'm adding an additional edge loop uh, moved it upward and then added a bevel to it uh, which resulted in a smooth crisp uh, smooth curve so, uh, so most of the 90 percent of my hard surface objects if nothing is working then i i mostly add a bevel to it and it starts to work um, well bevel is my 90 percent of the go-to tool when working on the hard surface object i'm making sure that this part stays seamless here uh, because I will be duplicating it and then merging the vertices on the outside edges So I'm making sure that it stays seamless So right now I'm just duplicating it and it, it is seamless But since all of these parts are separate, so I, I will be building the vertices First I will be uh, combining those meshes and then I will be uh, merging those vertices on a uh, distance tolerance uh, uh, Merge vertices automatically give you a tolerance of 0 0.01 and then it will merge those vertices uh, Right now I'm adding some additional details with the cube and selecting all the edges and adding bevel to it Which will add a sharp crease to it uh, So I'm doing the same thing again. I'm uh, putting my mesh into the center and uh, making sure that the transformation are freezed for the curvature uh, curve there were some few uh, vertices uh, that were deformed uh, badly at the end of the curve so i cleaned it up so i'm changing the orientation of my model again and again and adding the curve wrap deformer on it because uh, when i had deformed it previously it wasn't uh, looking good uh, it, the orientation was uh, the inner side was outward after bending it so i just uh, rotated it 90 and then applied the curve wrap deformer afterward on top of it yeah so i'm making sure the the proportion stays correct and i was taking those meshes so for this circular piece i will i'm taking a cube and scaling it upward and and uh, now we'll be removing some of the pieces some of the faces here and adding a bevel to the back face to make it a bit curved so uh, for some uh, in some instance i will be using duplicate special for example uh, if i want all the instance to stay seamless i will be using duplicate special uh, because if I move one vertex on one mesh, it will change on all meshes. So here I'm using duplicate special. So if I move one vertex, all the instance of the object moves with it as well. So uh, since be it became seamless, I can just duplicate it uh, uh, circularly. And right now I'm selecting the edges, adding bevel to it. Uh, and then I will be selecting each of these faces 
and because this center uh, circular face was uh, 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 would have uh, reacted badly in zebra so I was cleaning it up uh, adding quartz to it and now I'm extruding the outside faces and I'm uh, I have added an additional edge loop and then trans with uh, transform brush I ex uh, moved it out and then added a bevel to it for the center face I'm selecting the circular faces and pulling it out uh, extruding it out and it will create uh, give me a pull uh, uh, and it will show an edge of how this part is connected to the shoulder pad so for every part i have, have when i clean the models up sometime i uh, retopo them up uh, and sometime i just uh, make it these models in the center of grid uh, because i have meshes from the brush i can see how how much uh, uh, bigger or circular they should be so that they are applied seamlessly on top of the model so uh, right now when I add the shoulder plate uh, uh, the uh, pointy edges were short so I cleaned them up and now I'm mirroring all the geometries so I'll be doing the same when I will be uh, I was will be working on UVs I just uh, do one, uh, one side of uh, the UVs in order to save the texture space and then I mirror it out because most of the technique I use are for game characters so uh, I try to save space uh, wherever uh, I want it uh, you can see the uh, underneath body of the character is uh, related as well uh, because uh, I want to save the police but uh, since it was a personal project I went a little overboard on the character so right now I'm doing the same. I'm extruding some faces and adding uh, edge loop on the corner so that it stays sharp and crisp and do not deform randomly, randomly because it's a metal part and I want to uh, show that the corners are uh, sharp and crisp. So I'm uh, I am adding a triangle right now because some of uh, uh, Maya symmetry is not the best and. Uh, it wasn't adding edges on the other side so some of the edges weren't correct so I just mirrored it out and then merged both meshes and then merged the vertices that were connecting to it. Right now I'm adding a hook and the wire uh, which will be co uh, connecting both of the pieces because this is an arm piece and I want to show that it's connects, it connects properly. Uh, so I, right now I'm working on the shape of it and uh, tweaking some of the edges, uh, deleting the inner side of uh, the faces because the inner side won't be visible. Uh, right, and now I'm adding a curve. And uh, since in Maya 22 there is a sweep mesh <coughs> plugin, I'm adding the edge loops on top of it. And right now I'm adding a twist modifier and bending the edges because I, I want a curve that twists around uh, and duplicate because I want to show a rope instead of a straight cylinder. So I'm twisting it out to 3600 uh, degrees and then extracting a curve from an edge loop. And now I will be using sweep mesh to again uh, uh, create a mesh uh, which looks like uh, somewhat like a rope and so this is what i got and this was i was originally intending to make because this is a high poly i will add another uh, simple cylinder on top of it and when i take this mesh into zbrush i will project all the details and uh, delete the high poly one so i will be taking both of these meshes in zbrush on top of each other and then i will be just projecting it uh, up in zbrush yeah so this is my basic workflow uh, right now i'm just bending it out because i want uh, it to look like uh, it's wrapping around and it's pushing both of the pieces of this arm pair together so most of my tools are basic it's uh, in hard surface it's 99.99 uh, uh, percent it's bevel i use bevel a lot of time and for hard surface i always add a cut on top of it uh, add multiple edges on the corners yeah 
so right now I'm checking and making sure that it uh, looks like it's connecting both of the pieces together and which it kind of looks at my adding materials on it right now and I'm making sure that it's wrapped around correctly for every, every piece I uh, take a duplicate and move it to the side so that uh, uh, so that uh, I have an original piece if I want to change something at the end of my character. So I'm tweaking the shape of it and uh, checking whether it aligns correctly to the arm. So right now I'm working on another uh, uh, gauntlet piece and um, because uh, it was made in ZBrush and it looked pretty good in ZBrush as you can see. Uh, but uh, you can see that it is bent a bit wrongly it's not uh, as circular as it should be so i will be making it circular and because i wanted multiple edge loops uh, multiple uh, small details in the hard surface objects of it and that's uh, why i'm making a seamless piece in maya and i will be duplicate this piece and bending it along a circular part and i will get all the details on this arm uh, on this gauntlet piece uh, so i'm selecting those some of the edges and uh, extruding it inward and adding this sharp crease to it and right now i'm deleting the extra faces because when you extrude the mesh out it uh, add is, uh, it adds a face uh, along every part of it so right now i'm adding thickness and making sure it uh, uh, welds with the extruded part and uh, I just selected those mesh uh, those vertices all of the vertices and uh, uh, did a merge vertex based on the distance and uh, with the 0 0.001 tolerance and yeah so now I'm taking a plane and adding some uh, additional details like I did on the shoulder pads so I'm doing the same thing uh, so I decided to make a seamless piece instead of a whole uh, plane with details and then bending it out because uh, for seamless piece I can just duplicate it out and then merge it and then bend it. So I'm doing the same thing I'm adding bevels to it moving the vertices and adding curvature to it. Uh, here I will be doing the same add in an edge loop move the vertex down and add bevel to it. Uh, to uh, make uh, to get this sharp crease and then I'm extruding it out and make sure the outer edge of it is really pointy and then I mirrored it out to get this uh, uh, pointy object uh, because I will be making this part seamless I'm deleting the other half and right now I just duplicate it uh, uh, set its uh, scale to minus one and then merge it out with the rest of the person and right now it's it's totally seamless and uh, i'm checking and making sure that the curve is smooth uh, there are no jagged edges into it and right now i'm doing the same i just duplicated all of the meshes and combined it uh, and uh, merging those vertices by selecting all the merges, uh, all the vertices so right now i'm adding bevel to the center of the edge and make sure the corners are sharp and crisp yeah maybe some part of the video was cut it out somehow or it got missed uh, sorry about that so yeah the arm portion is here yeah, right now you can see that i just uh, duplicated the mesh and bended it along the curve and so for the shoes I find it the most difficult piece uh, when modeling it out uh, because uh, it looked uh, symmetrical on both sides while uh, the shoes is actually not symmetrical and there are very small uh, changes in the volumes uh, which makes the shoes distinct and uh, specific to the model. So for shoes I usually do uh, uh, a bit of retopo and cleanup, uh, uh, cleaning out the meshes uh, using the quad draw tool, and uh, adding different edge loops to where I need for uh, for every shoes. Uh, this workflow is same. I could just uh, try to create the shape uh, while uh, using quad draw or some uh, other modeling tools uh, because shoes need to have a very specific shape in order to look like a shape so i just sculpt a very basic form in zbrush and then i take it up in maya and then i work on it 
because uh, I feel very comfortable with molding the shoes because uh, it gives me a nice clean topology and right now you can see that it's uh, it is very nice and clean topology if I had done it in ZBrush and just really meshed it out it wouldn't be as clean and it wouldn't give me the freedom uh, to move the vertices or to move the, or change the shape of the face shape of the shoes as freely as I'm doing it Maya so I'm very comfortable working on the hard surface objects or the shoes in Maya because uh, it's uh, very easy for me to do you can do that in ZBrush if you're comfortable with it so right now I'm just uh, tweaking the vertices and making sure the shape of the shoes is correct because they're uh, uh, will be uh, I will be adding a sole and there will be a heel at the end of it uh, so I'm making sure the front part of the shoes is touching to the ground when uh, I'm extruding it up so here I'm adding a sole and I'm adding mevels on multiple of the faces uh, right now I just mm, fill a hole onto the bottom part of the shoe and cleaning it out but uh, i will remove it later on because it will create a weird crease and then i will remove all the faces and then just bridge it out because it's uh, get giving me some weird artifacts here on on, to on the bottom of the shoes so here i just deleted all those faces and because uh, the same number of edges are added on both sides of the shoes I, I will be just bridging it out and then adding some edges into the center and cleaning it out by uh, using a vertex well tool and sometimes bridge tool or sometimes fill hole tool yeah so right now i'm just adding uh, multiple faces and filling the, the holes somewhere i'm merging out the faces as well so the sole is complete right now uh, i will be adding some materials now there were a few uh, jagged edges that i just cleared up and right now i'm the, making sure that the pants are staying inside the shoes so I will be t uh, because I'm just tweaking uh, here in Maya these meshes won't be changed in ZBrush so I'll be doing the same uh, thing when I import these shoes in ZBrush for importing and exporting uh, I use uh, sometimes I use OBJ files and sometimes I use FPX files uh, depending on what I'm doing uh, for example if I uh, for baking I want to export all of the high, high poly and low poly meshes so I will be uh, using my FPX when exporting uh, for the baked meshes and right now I'm adding the heel and uh, um, while adding the heel it is very important that your heel shouldn't uh, stick out uh, your front part of the shoes uh, sh should have the same uh, uh, same as the same plane uh, as the heel so you should be very very sensitive uh, related to that because otherwise it will look like your shoe uh, is in the air is in the air and it doesn't uh, it's not even touching the ground so that's what uh, why it's very important right now i'm working on the pieces that i will be adding on uh, top of the shoes so I, I am doing the same procedure as I have done before. I'm just working on it. Sometimes I re it, sometimes I add bevels to it. Sometimes I just deform it. The same thing over and over again. Extruding it out, adding curvature to it, adding bevels to it. So uh, if there is something that needs explaining, I will jump back to it uh, in the video. However, right now I will be adding some music to it and uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.
Oh,